you know, our mantra is do it right or don't do it. And our, our other mantra when we're working with, with customers and projects is hell yes or no. It's either the best fit out there and we're so excited to do it or we can't take it on. Hey, good morning, everyone. John Fenton here, the CEO of Sensei, and I'm with my great friend, Jeff John, CEO. And Jeff, good morning. Good morning. Good to be here. Great to have you on. And, and uh, Jeff, you and I have known each other, I guess, about a year now. We met yep. at the uh, Small Business Matters Conference uh, with our friend, uh, Tim Fulton, the host, organizer. And uh, you, you gave a great presentation, and I was just so it was so great to meet you then, and we've stayed in touch since then. And um, I thought we'd get together and just, I'd love to learn more about you and your business and uh, what makes uh, you and your company special. Sounds awesome. So tell me more about your company and what you guys are up to. Yeah, so I actually founded Dynamics sophomore year of college at Berry College. And it was, uh, it was my first real business. My second, you know, so I had a pseudo business at 14, setting up networks and infrastructure for small businesses built out a few state farm call centers before my 15th birthday <laughs> and um, decided that was too embarrassing because in 1999 kids didn't have cell phones and so they would call my parents on the landline and say hey uh, you know is Jeff there uh, this is Tim from State Farm and and my mom would say hey State Farm's on the phone and I go oh great hey sure yeah I can I can help with that what time can you come pick me up <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, so sophomore year, I started Dynamics and really started it because I was a, a poor college student and had a neat car and wanted an alarm system for it. And I didn't have $1,200 for an alarm system, but what I had was time. And so I looked at it and said, what can a, what can a kid with time and no money make that will get him an alarm system? <laughs> nice. So, what, what kind of car did you have? It's a, a 99 Mercury Mountaineer, which is uh -huh. basically a glorified Ford Explorer, but it had a right. 5.0 Mustang motor in it. Oh, nice. And I had supercharged it myself <laughs> in college, and so it had some power. Nice. I but, drive, yeah. a, uh, I drive a, a 50th anniversary Mustang 5.0 nice. GT, GT 5.0. Yep. Uh, my dream car is the Cobra. <laughs> yeah. Do <laughs> so, it. I love what, it. Uh, what generation Cobra? Oh, the uh, with the 350, yeah, GT, yeah, GT 350, yeah, great cars, they are. Um, that's something you I think I was talking to somebody once. It's kind of kind of like we were in Italy a couple of years ago, several years ago, and uh, on Sundays, all the Ferraris and Lamborghinis come out, so they yep. kind of bring them, they bring those out of these nice, you know, villas and stuff, and they bring them out on Sunday to drive. So to me, that's the kind of car that would be. You can't drive it every day because it just, you know. <laughs> Be chewing up the gas like crazy, but uh, a lot of fun. Not only chewing up the, gra uh, the, <laughs> the <Yeah>. gas, the <laughs> gas, but uh, I uh, I have a uh, Mustang GT, an orange Mustang, and that's the car that I drive to meetings and, and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And just going down seventy five, the mm -hmm. number of rock chips and stuff I've gotten in that oh. car. Oh, I know, I know. Now, do you have a do you have an automatic or a manual shift? Yeah, it's a paddle shifter. Okay. Yeah. You got it. You got to have, you got to have six. I got six on the floor. It's all, the console. I love it. It's awesome. Yeah, I have a Z3 have that's a manual. So that's the, uh, <laughs> the driving a, a manual car, but right. I figured I was going to have to answer calls and, and stuff. And I yeah. just sitting in traffic in Atlanta. It's not that much fun. Well, me. that, and uh, it's really hard eating an ice cream cone while you're driving a stick shift. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> So tell me more about your company. So from there, you, you uh, decided you were going to earn a way to, to have a, a security system for the car that you love. Tell me, tell me more about what happened. Yeah. So, so I was a shy kid. Uh, I call myself a recovering introvert. I used to be <laughs> so shy that I would bump into people at the grocery store and stuff because I was looking at my feet. And so I spent three months, taught myself how to design and code, built a website for this, this company and couldn't procrastinate anymore from there mm -hmm. and put on a dress shirt and drove an hour to their office from Barry and just walked up and said, hey, you have a site, it's not very good. I built you a new one, can I have an alarm system? <laughs> and 
I was so nervous that I broke out in a big red rash mm. all over my neck and everything. Wow. And I think that's the only reason the sale happened because while I was in the middle of this terrible pitch to this poor girl who was subjected to my walking up and talking to her, uh, the sales guy walks by and he says, dude, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I oh was like, God. man, they don't know who I am. I can run and change the logo and give this to somebody else in a couple weeks or i can just pretend i never did this and be done with it mm -hmm. but i was like i'm already here i'm wearing a dress shirt uh, i might as well you know see this thing through and <laughs> so uh i said he said what did you eat for lunch and i was like a burger and he was like that must be it man you must be allergic to burgers and i think the the girl took pity on me she's like oh my gosh this kid is going to burst into tears here in a second if I don't uh, if I don't train an alarm system. And <laughs> her response is basically, people come and pitch us a new site every week. You're the first person who came in with something done. It's better than what we have. It's cheap. Let's do this. So awesome. that, that was my first site. And then uh, went from there to do a site for Dub Magazine and Audio Bond back when they were or around. And mm -hmm. uh, so they fiberglass my dashboard and put a great stereo in and everything and got out of that and said, okay, that was cool, but I think I want to make this a real business now. Mm -hmm. And so kept going senior year, had a full-time person and uh, got kicked out of my house because my roommate decided to propose to his girlfriend um, six months before school ended. And so I had to buy a house an hour away from school and did that plus hiring our first guy who's still with us uh, the same weekend. And I had $2,500 in the bank. <laughs> this right. was back when to buy a house, you just had to show that you've been paying a phone bill for a couple months. Right. right. So I worked, uh, worked basically every waking minute, was taking 18 hours of classes, two hour daily commute, senior year. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any of it was just mm -hmm. exhausted mm -hmm. and uh, you know, got out of that. And then the, uh, the real estate market crashed <laughs> mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and spent the next few years just basically working two jobs to pay my first, my guy and to, to cover my mortgage and to build software. Mm -hmm. And so we just kept as long as we can, can pay the basics. That's what we are and stayed that way for the next several years and finally hired another person another person now we're up to 16 people so awesome awesome so how long have you been in business now with your company what's the how long have you you've since you incorporated uh, it's, yeah it's been 15 years awesome that's really awesome so tell me you know going back to that first sale right um and, and what did it take from you being a, now you're a so-called recovering introvert, right? But you obviously were very shy, right? And you broke out into this rash. It had to be really embarrassing, I would think, right? Absolutely. And what did it take from you to overcome that situation? What do you think it took from you? I don't think I felt like I had a choice, really. You know, it was just one of those things that I felt like I needed to do. And I, it's taken me a while to trace back to it. I've always felt sort of behind in life. And I, I don't know why, but I've always felt like a, just a burning drive to push things forward and grab and pull. And, you know, I've been inventing things since I was a little kid. And mm -hmm. I just don't know how to sit still. And so this was the next, the next logical leap to being able to push things forward. And it was terrifying because I had never made a sale and, you know, in in high school when i started that first thing people found out about me and they called me and i said sure i'll go do it and this was my first time having to actually kind of put myself out there and say mm -hmm. hey i think i can do this i'm not sure that i can do this because i haven't done it before but let's experiment together and see if this turns into something <laughs> you really have an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit yeah i don't know i think it's just uh too too stubborn to know what's good for me <laughs> So, you know, obviously um, you've seen a lot of ups and downs in the last 15 years, and certainly we're in a really crazy time. Um, you were telling me some really, last week we were talking and you were telling me about some really cool things you've been doing yep. uh, with your company and helping your customers. And, and tell me more about that. I, wanna, I, want, I yep. want our listeners and the people who are watching this to learn more about some of the cool things that you, you're doing. Sure. Yeah, so first of all, I felt like, 
you know, coming, coming out of college and directly into basically a market crash and no one wanting to spend any money and, and all that, and still being that introvert who was afraid to go talk to people and trying to go make sales. I've always had this sort of scar tissue of it's when, not if that something bad's going to happen again. I need to have us prepared. We need to be safe. You know, I, every person that works for us, I really, I want them not worrying about whether they're going to be safe. And so a couple of years ago, we really started focusing on how do we create safety and how do we be prepared for whatever is going to come? Obviously, none of us had any idea it was going to be this. We just right. knew there was going to be something and I didn't want it to take us out. Mm -hmm. And so us being very um, aggressive in terms of pushing things forward and conservative in terms of financials and, and making sure that we weren't, weren't uh, creating a high burn rate and everything put us in a really good position going into this. And, you know, our mantra is do it right or don't do it. And our, our other mantra when we're working with, with customers and projects is hell yes or no. It's either the best fit out there and we're so excited to do it or we can't take it on. And so as soon as this started and we went remote for COVID, I told all my guys because I knew they were gonna do this anyway and I just didn't want any ambiguity around it. Mm -hmm. I said everything COVID related is free from a client support standpoint. So they need alert bars, they need this, they need that. We're doing all of this stuff for free and it's also top priority. So any normal stuff gets kicked down the queue. If it's a COVID message, I mean, this is stay in business stuff for a lot of our clients. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be nickel and diming them. We're just going to get in there and knock it out. And so we gave away thousands of dollars worth of free time. and. I also looked at it and, and really Vistage has most of the credit for this. Um, you know, some of my guys in my group and Sean's group were out there doing really great things for the community. And then on the flip side, I knew members in various groups that were really struggling. And so thought, what can we be doing to make a positive impact to both shine a light on the guys that are doing good and to help sort of protect and preserve the guys that are struggling. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm a web guy, so I defaulted to let's build websites. Right. And so we donated a site for Vistage called Leading in Challenging Times. Uh, we donated another one to our friends at uh, CMG, Atlanta Radio, um, Stronger Together ATL. Uh, we did a bunch of work for our friends at Pike Nurseries and Armstrong Gardens and, you know, just built out a, a bunch of sites that were designed specifically to tell the positive stories so that the, the news wasn't all COVID deaths and businesses going under and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we gave one to the chamber as well, Cobb Chamber and, and Barry College. And, you know, it's been really gratifying to see some of these stories come on there and, and see people that don't know how to brag on themselves because that's us, you know, <laughs> Right. Um, being able to have an outlet for those stories to be shared. That is so special and, and Vistage, you know, I'm a Vistage speaker as, as well as you are. And um, our friend Sean Bradley has a great couple of groups, I guess, and Vistage groups for CEOs and leaders. Um, and tell me about, again, so you, you used a couple of phrases early, earlier as you were describing uh, all the great things you've been doing. I think it's really cool. Because it sounds like what you're being is really, you're being relational and not transactional, which I think is so important nowadays, with, given what's going on. I've been doing a similar thing for my customer base and, and, and CEOs. Um, one thing you said was do it right or don't do it. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Hell yes or no. Hell yes or no. Got it. Yeah, I love that. Um, the other one is if it's not maintainable, it's not a solution, which we need a, a less nerdy version of that. But basically, it means that if the customer needs perfect. us, again on that thing then we didn't build it right right got it so you're really keen on high quality sounds like oh yeah absolutely yeah. yeah and i mean life's too short to do stuff you're not proud of right and it's too short to work with jerks you know we've had to fire jerks before you know that at the end of the day you choose to to be at work to have a job to do what you do right and it it wouldn't be fair to the people who make the decision to be here 
to not take it seriously and make sure that it's a supportive environment and that the customers they're interacting with appreciate them. Right. That's really cool. Um, you know, um, how can, how can people find you? Like what's the best way for people that are watching or listening to connect with you, Jeff? Yeah, just uh, Google search dynamics. We should be the number one result. And uh, if you hit LinkedIn, just Jeff Yan, just like you're tired, but it's spelled J-A-H-N is my name. Or you can just type in chief nerd and I'm guessing you'll probably find it that way too. <laughs> That's so cool. So I have a couple of questions, kind of rapid fire kind of thing yeah. right here near the end of our, our talk today. And it's so great to, to connect with you, uh, Jeff Yan. I think I said Jeff John earlier. I don't, even, I don't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> my name is John Jeffrey, <laughs> John Jeff. Anyway, um, so a couple of sort of rapid fire questions, nothing real, real heavy here, but I would love to uh, just kind of pop these out so people get to know you a little bit better. Um, um, and uh, what are you excited about right now? Man, great question. So my, my biggest excitement right now is our software called Octane and the things we're mm -hmm. able to do with it. We're building some just incredible capabilities that are letting our clients do more than they ever could and are opening the door for more clients to be able to use it. And, you know, just the, the fun part is we've hit a cadence now where every day I'm seeing things get pushed into production that I had no hand in or I tangentially suggested two months ago and and it got put down people came up with a much better idea of that you know from that and so it's taken on a life of its own over the past few years in particular and just being able to to sort of step back a little bit and watch the guys be creative and build amazing stuff is just so exciting it really is exciting and obviously you have a team of people you really trust and and yep. know that they're going to get the job done in, in excellence right absolutely yeah um what are you most grateful about what are you grateful for? Awesome. What are question. one or two things you're grateful for? Uh, I, I'll say family, my parents, my wife, my two kids, you know, just being able to have them be with them, you know, to have their support. There's no way I would be anything like I am without them. Mm -hmm. And same thing goes for, for my guys. Our team is just amazing. And they're all, uh, you know, they're, you know, there's, there's two types of personalities. I know there's a million, but there's really, there's two, there's the, the givers and the takers. Mm -hmm. There's the what's in it for me guys. And there's the, I'll take that on people. And we have a bunch of, I'll take that on people. And so being able to have them there and be pushing and doing cool things with and for them. And I'm just so, so grateful for it. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and uh, what do you, uh, what are you enjoying most? What do you enjoy most? The really high creative process right now. The, the speed and velocity of our ability to iterate on the software is what's most exciting right now. You know, Great. being able to throw out an idea and two hours later it's in production. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's nothing like that, especially because my guys fired me from the code <laughs> six years ago. I literally have no idea how to even get into our code <laughs> on purpose. And they fired me from design around the same time. And so to, to be able to see this stuff move so quickly almost <clears throat> makes it feel like I'm still allowed to do those things. <laughs> <laughs> was that hard for you to make that transition to let go? It, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life yeah. because, you know, if you think about it, most people start businesses around what they're good at. And I felt like I was good at designing and I was good at creating a vision mm -hmm. and, and bringing mm -hmm. it to life. And to realize that, the CEO can't be the CEO if he's the head designer and if he's coding things and if he's doing mm -hmm. this and if he's doing that. And I have to step back and say, even if I think I'm good at it, my putting 20% time into it is going to be way worse than someone else putting 100% of time into it. Plus, no matter how good I think I am, there are better people at whatever <laughs> thing is out That's there. Right. And so I just got in the mode of firing myself systematically. And that's mm -hmm. when we started growing. We were two people with me included until I hit that turning point of I need to start firing myself and went through that process. And then I hit this, this uh, plateau where I had fired myself from all the fun stuff and <laughs> all I had left was the garbage, the stuff that 
you can't really give to someone the things that you don't want to do. And I had like a year of just mourning, you know, mm -hmm. going, I don't really like this anymore. I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to design. I'm not allowed to code. I don't get to project manage. I don't get to do any of the fun stuff. All I get is the problems. <laughs> right. So I had to push past that and figure out how to bring my skills and the things I think I'm good at into the mix and be creative in a different way. So how did you, how, you had to make a shift, right? In your mindset about that. How did, what did you do to make that shift? I think fundamentally started with, you know, I, I ask why constantly, why am I doing this? Am I the guy to do this? Is there anyone better? If there's someone better then it's my mission to make them the person instead of me. And then I just, just kind of identified the things that I'm passionate about and that I think I add value on. And I started identifying how I could translate that into the business as it was becoming versus what it used to be mm -hmm. and how I could support my guys and be something that would bring us forward instead of holding us back. And I think that's the hardest transition for any founder is to go from, I'm the guy, everything relies on me to, I can be gone for a while and it doesn't matter because the things are put in place that work right. It's hard to reconcile that shift for a lot of people. It was for me, but um, you know, so glad we pushed through that. Absolutely. You know, it's a similar, I think it's a similar transition and, and struggle that a lot of entrepreneurs and business people go through of letting go. And like, I like to tell the people I work with, you know, it's about trusting your instincts, trusting your gut and really finding that what's that one thing that you're really better than you can do better than anybody else. And yeah, you could do code, right. And you're really super competent at it. You're actually probably very excellent at it, but it's keeping you back. There's a great book uh, by Dr. Gay Hendricks called the big leap. I don't know if you've heard of it. And uh, he talks about these four quadrants and your zone of excellence, your zone of unique ability or zone of genius is the place you really want to be to maximize your success in your company. Yeah, absolutely. It makes, makes a ton of sense. And I, I think you, you sort of see where businesses go based on, based on that founder CEO's ability to let go. Mm -hmm. And right. Right. you, know, you kind of hit that plateau of where they can't let go. And my next got to let go is on being so in the weeds on some of the software stuff. And, and I'm in the process of letting people take, take the reins on some of the cool ideas. And, you know, it's, it's gratifying to see some idea that I never heard of come in, into production. And the first time I see it is, Hey, look at this new thing we just launched. Oh my gosh, I had no idea that was a thing. Well, yeah, we know <laughs> we made it, uh, made it and, and pushed it out here. And, uh, you know, we, we knew that, uh, if you got into it, you would, uh, you would want to think about how we, you know, you, you'd brainstorm it. You want it a little different. Let's launch it. And then, uh, then we can go from there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, really. That's really cool. Well, Jeff, thank you so much. You are a giver. I can tell you're a giver and you certainly are giving of your time today. And I really appreciate the time we're spending today to likewise to know you and learn more about your company. Um, I love it. Do it. You've heard it here, folks. Do it right or don't do it. What was the other one again? Hell yes or no. Hell yes or no. Um, and Jeff, it's just an honor to have you on with me today. Uh, your company, again, the company name? Uh, Dynamics. And how can they reach you? What's the best way they can reach you again? Just uh, hit LinkedIn and type in Jeff. Last name is J-A-H-N. Awesome. Awesome. And I'll put all the information in the show notes so you can see it in the text. Um, again, Jeff Yon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, CEO of Dy Dynamics. Yep, Dynamics. Right, Dynamics. And uh, just a great person, a giver. And this is John Fenton, the CEO Sensei, saying, see you next time. Thank you.